In this video, we'll create an Ubuntu Linux VM in the Azure portal. My name is Chris Peachman. I'm a Microsoft MVP. You can follow me on my blog at buildazure.com and on Twitter at buildazure. Now let's go into the Azure portal and create an Ubuntu VM. Now I'm logged into the Azure portal. To create a new VM, I'll click on the plus new bu button in the navigation on the left. And let's expand the compute section on the left here. And we have a handful of different VM images we can choose from. So Windows Server 2012, 2016, for Linux, we have Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Ubuntu Server, and we can click See All to view everything in the marketplace and go search for a specific distribution we're looking for. In this case, I'm going to use Ubuntu Server 16.04 LTS. So click that option. And this gives me a little explanation about that image. And I'm going to go ahead and click Create, because this is the one I want to go and provision. Now I need to first configure some basics for my VM. I need to give the VM a name. And then specify the VM disk type. SSD gives us high performance, solid state drive back storage. And then HDD gives us a little more cost efficient spinning hard disk drives that store our VM disk. In this case, I'm gonna leave it as SSD. Let's go for speed. So then the username this is going to be the admin username to connect to our Ubuntu server. And then we can use SSH public key encryption. We can paste our public key in here that we can use. Or I can select private or password. In this case, I'm going to use password. So I'll type in a password. And then our subscription is selected already. The subscription we want to create this in. And we need to specify a resource group. type in the name for a resource group to put this VM and all its resources in. This allows me to group all of the different resources that make up this virtual machine into the same resource group so I can manage and secure them and delete them and, and everything together. Then I need to specify the location and this allows me to pick the Azure region that I want to provision my virtual machine in. In this case I'll choose North Central US. Then I'll click create and then the next pane in this wizard I need to specify the virtual machine size. So here's some recommended sizes to choose from. These are some of the more commonly used VM sizes. Or if I click on view all, this will list out all of the different VM sizes and I can scroll through and pick which size I want to use. Some of the sizes in here that are shown are going to be dependent on the, the Azure region that we picked to host our, our VM in, as well as what disk type, SSD or hard disk that we're going to use. In this case, I picked SSD in North Central US, so it's showing me VM sizes available based on those options that I chose. I'll click back on Recommended, and I'm just going to select the DS2v2. It'll give me two CPU cores and seven gigabytes of memory. Click Select. Now that we've set the size, we have some additional settings we can choose. We can configure here if we want to use Managed Disks. This is the newer Managed Disks feature that Microsoft is recommending that people use with VMs. This eliminates the need to manage a storage account associated with the VM, makes things a little bit easier to manage, and then Azure kind of automatically does things behind the scenes to manage the, uh, the IOPS and stuff for your performance of your disk. And then there's network settings, so we can configure the virtual network, subnet, public IP address, network security group firewall rules for our VM, and we can install VM extensions at the time it's provisioned. We can set an availability set if we're going to go and create multiple VMs that are part of the same workload to manage high availability. And we can also set up and enable uh, boot diagnostic monitoring, which I'll leave enabled by default, and then guest OS diagnostics, which you can configure and configure a storage account for that. In this case, I'm leaving all the default settings, and I'll click OK. And then we have a summary. This kind of shows us what we've chose to provision. It validates, make sure n name uniqueness and other thing are good. And we'll click OK and go and provision that virtual machine. Now, while that's provisioning, I'm going to go navigate to the resource group. Excuse me, clicked on the wrong one. So Super Ubuntu group. So we have a virtual network that's been provisioned. It's going to go and provision a bunch of different resources in this resource group. They're all part of this virtual machine that we're provisioning. If I click refresh, we can see there's a few more that came in here. It's going to kind of, if we keep refreshing, we'll see them pop in as they're provisioned, and then it'll notify us when they're complete. We can see there's a network interface. This is the 
virtual equivalent of a network interface card. Um, Azure uses all software-defined networking, so all the different networking components are actually software-defined, and they're all configurable and, and manageable separate as resources within the portal. Then we have storage accounts. Uh, this top one is going to be used for diagnostics logs that are stored. And then this bottom one is a disk storage. Um, another storage account is going to be used to store the actual operating system disk. Um, we can also use that to store any data disks we would attach to our VM as well. All the disks for VMs are stored in Azure Storage, and they're billed as Azure Storage is billed. And then the virtual machine is billed as a VM resources are billed. And then the virtual network is going to be our software-defined network that our virtual machine is going to be running within. The public IP address is going to find the public IP to be able to access and connect to this VM. And the network security groups are going to allow us to set up some firewall rules within our virtual network to secure our virtual machine. So instead of setting up firewalls on the virtual machine itself, we can just set up the network security group rules. And by default, it'll actually block all traffic except for SSH. Um, so we're good there initially, but we can configure it beyond that for our needs later. I'll click refresh again. We can see our virtual machine is in here. Let me check the notifications. It still says deployment is started, so it's still working on deploying that. I'll click on the virtual machine. It's still provisioning, but we can go look at it anyway. So while it's still going, oh, now it says it's running, so I guess it, it fired up. We have to wait for that VM to boot up before we can connect to it. We can see the public IP address here. This is the IP address we could use to connect to our VM. Initially, this is a dynamically assigned IP address. So if we were to stop and restart our VM, then that IP address could change. On the left here, we have all the different options uh, for different configurations we can do on our VM. If I click Size, this is going to allow us to change the size of the VM. So we can actually change the pricing tier at any time to adjust how much of this VM is going to cost and also how many resources it has available to be able to support the load that we're putting up against it. Keep in mind that changing this tier will cause the virtual machine to be rebooted. So you don't really want to do it during production, peak load times, things like that. Um, if you have an availability set with many VMs, maybe you can do that on individual VMs at a time um, and manage that. So I click on notifications. Yes, it said deployment has succeeded. So I'm going to connect to this virtual machine. Um, now that we have an Ubuntu VM running in Azure, let's connect to it with SSH. Um, and see how to remote into this VM running in Azure. So in the toolbar up here on the top, I'm going to click Connect, and this is going to give us the SSH command we can copy and paste into Bash. In this case, it's a, it fills in the admin username and the IP address for us. Now that I copy that, I'm going to go over to Bash, and now in Bash, we'll pa paste this in, and I'll hit Enter. And do we want? We don't have this fingerprint on our machine. Do we or should we want to connect to this server? Um, yes. In this case, we'll trust it. Um, and then we need to enter in that password because we chose password authentication. So we'll enter in the password that we entered into the portal when we created the VM and hit enter. And now we're connected and remoted into this VM. And if I type top, we can go and see all the processes that are running on this Ubuntu VM running in Azure. Alright, thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe.